we're here today with Jenna Anderson, who is a certified welder for structural steel and a few different processes, um, MIG and flux core all uh, positions. Um, she has an associate in science for welding, um, welding fabrication technology. Let me get that right. Okay. Um, and also an associate in art. She is a recent graduate. Um, so we're, we're celebrating a graduation here on Zoom. So we can all get to chair and have a little fun with her. Um, but Jenna is a welder, an artist, a student. Um, and most importantly, she's my cousin. So we're going to sit here and talk with her a little bit about um, her creative woman isness, paving a legacy, um, and just kind of highlight her a bit. So I've, I've put a whole lot into your title. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that and break that down? Oh my gosh. Well, my title is long, I guess. It's a collection mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of different things. First, I'm a welder. I, uh, I recently graduated. Um, I weld a bunch of different processes, MIG, FlexCore, things I'm not certified in, TIG. And I also just like to like cut up metal. Separate <laughs> from welding, I just like to like make some stuff out of metal and that's where artist comes in mm -hmm. but I also paint and knit and sew and if I can get my hands on it I will make it nothing and safe, a cousin huh? let's see a uh, cousin from far away a distance cousin from Washington we miss you I wish I was down in California more <laughs> <laughs> well what got you into welding and what age did you start let's see it's kind of a weird story um I started when I was 19. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to be a dental assistant and I really liked working oh. in the, de <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really liked working in the uh, uh, dental industry. Like working in that field was really fun. Mm -hmm. It's really like hands-on and you're doing, you know, tiny uh, high detail things. And I thought that was fun, but I wasn't making enough money. Yeah. So I decided to go back to college and I was gonna go to dental school. And um, my dad's a veteran, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you, dad. So the VA pays for my school and Great. their paperwork to my dental school I applied for was slow because state papers are slow. Uh, yeah. And yes. so I, I, missed, I, I missed my position um, in line. And when you like when your tuition isn't paid on time and you miss your, like you lose your spot in line in the dental school, they put you on like a year lapse. Where they, you have to like wait oh. another year to jump back onto this wait list. And so wow. I was like, no, like that's too long. Um, and my mom was like, well, you have to go to school. Like just take any class, like just, you know, right. just do something. Cause I have free school and I didn't want to lose the opportunity to, you know, go to college for free. And so we were looking online and my mom was like, uh, there's a welding program 20 minutes from here. No so way. Like, Do you want to try that? And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> like, what's well, like, I knew what welding was. I knew it meant like sticking metal pieces of metal together. together. Uh -huh. Absolutely. But I didn't know more that like, I knew it was called welding. Like, I didn't know that it, there was like, more specific names than that or that there were even like lots of different processes I was just like okay well you make something with your hands so like that sounds interesting I guess and um I signed up because I was like okay I, it's interesting I'm not sitting in a math class I'm not sitting in the English class yeah. mm -hmm. and um I can move and do whatever mm -hmm. and I'm getting paid so like let's try and I showed up I was the only woman and I was also wow. probably the only person under 25. Like I was mm -hmm. really shocked. So I show up to the welding program. I'm the youngest person and like the only woman. And I was wow. like, this is okay. Like, I'm just going to be brave and like pull my mm -hmm. pants up and pretend like I'm tough. Our teachers would show us a visual demonstration and I would walk into my booth and I would try and I'd be like, oh my God, I could do this. And then I'd hear the next like five people over in their booths, like cussing and mad, <laughs> throwing their tools and like not being able to do it. And I was like, oh, I could do this. <laughs> like, this is really wow. fun. 
<laughs> right. So you said that walking to that classroom, you were the only woman in that classroom, right? That yeah. That actually... I I take it back. There was another woman. Okay. Her name her name was uh, Brianna. Okay. We were friends, and I saw her on that first day, and I was like, "Me and you, girl, like, yes, Together. there's another right. woman here." Like, I it was like a sense of like safety and security, mm. and within like two days she was like I can't do this like this oh, is wow yeah and I just remember like a feeling like bad like I was like oh like I feel bad like she felt uncomfortable and like not safe and like I don't know mm-hmm. I wasn't ha- having those same feelings and so I just I I don't know I stayed and so that was like a sad loss and then I was like the only oh, woman man. for a while and I um but I was also really young. So it felt like I was going to school with a bunch of like dads, not like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, wow. Wow. yeah, it was yeah. like a, it was like a very weird um, environment to be in. I didn't necessarily feel like I was going to school with a bunch of like young, scary men that were going to even hit on me, but it was a bunch of right. like my dad or something. Okay. And I was like, Why am I here? <laughs> what are those statistics like in terms of women being in that industry? And then programs that potentially set women up to to jump into that pathway. Is there a such thing? So within welding, when I first started, so I started in 2018, I want to say, the percentage of women within welding in the United States was like 3.2%. And that was like reaching and that, that was reaching. As of this year, I do believe it's hit 4%, which is, okay. Okay. I mean, like that's t- tiny, but it that's growth in a few Absolutely. years, by all means, that's growth. And so even if that means it's thousands of people to a few more thousands of people, there there's definitely like a surge of women who are coming into the trades right now. It's actually predicted to be like the next surge in the trades is women like coming into everything, not just welding. Yeah. Um, which I think is really cool. That's a great absolutely. for programs to bring women specifically into welding or like the metal trades. There's nothing like wow. in, at least yeah. in this area okay. that mm-hmm. does not exist. But in the future, that is something I would love to do. Is just like yeah, yeah, I absolutely. think I think there's a, a million. I get a hundred messages a week on Instagram that are from women that are saying like, do you feel safe? It, do you think I should try this? Do you know where I can try this? Where mm-hmm. where should I go first? And it's like college is, I mean, I had a safe experience at college, but making people feel safe and welcomed mm-hmm. seems important. Right. Um, yeah. So and what like, are other barriers you've seen or you've had to break through or Oh my like on a day to day, a day to day, on a day to day. What does that look like for you? Wow, Jenna, your pants look so good. I was like, oh, mm, thank your overalls. you. <laughs> oh yeah, my big men's pants look so good. Uh-huh. <laughs> or just like, honestly, I will say, like, probably less than other women. Um, I, I will be rude back to men. So like. Mm. I, made men honest. in my school You'll be honest, o- honest. I'll honest. be uh, there you go mm-hmm. honest I will be honest um and blunt uh, to a, to a level that's appropriate and um <laughs> you know and I let think them know does, I am here yeah I think that does long. keep it down a notch beyond that um truly I'm good at what I do like I'm not so yeah. Go on and say it. Like, no, girl, yeah. your work speaks for yourself. Uh, so it does. And I think that's really important. Like Absolutely. I you guys can make fun of me, but like I see what your welds look like. And <laughs> so let's boss okay. up. That's I'm fine. Well, it's not welded. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, maybe had you been a little more feminine, like you would have they would have looked better. Okay. So um <laughs> I like <laughs> on a day, you know, I survive very well. Um in regards of like dealing with things related to my gender. Um, I think what's harder for me to deal with, especially given like the last 
four years, three or four years has just been like the political climate because you're, oh, yeah. you're in a really conservative white industry white and male. like, yes, um, I'm outspoken, but there's times when like, you just can't be outspoken because you're the only woman and you're five foot six mm -hmm. and it's not safe for you to be like, just mouth off. Like I'm ready to mouth off. And but, like these people are color. color. Yeah. Yeah. So then there's the other thing of like, I'm a woman of color who people don't always realize is a woman of color. And so sometimes right. people, people straight up communicate to me as if we're in some like safe white space and we're and we're not and so I'm hearing people say things out loud that they absolutely would not have said had they you know even had the slightest awareness they're like oh she might be mixed she might be something that's but we are like so unattuned like my theory I, as I was would tell my mom is like I think that there's lots of people who have like loved mixed people. Like if you've ever like loved a mixed person, a friend or a family member, like anybody, you can probably start to identify like, okay, that person's probably mixed. Like they look like my cousin right. and they look like my right. friend. And then there's really people that like, haven't been exposed to that. Absolutely. And so like there's, sure. they get no hint. There's zero hint from my black lives matter necklace to my like, frizz that's coming out of my welding hair like they have no hint there's no they like there's no awareness and so they make really offhand comments that they like oh oh I, hey josh you didn't mm. oh you didn't know i'm black huh? mm. and it's like mm. oh and sometimes it's fun to call people out or mm, like absolutely. you can make them really like get uncomfortable to do surprise on them. But I would say like, that's by far harder to deal with than any gender related issue. Mm -hmm. It's just like, absolutely. That's, that's flying a, that is tough. I, yeah, I like, I heard not so silly, but I heard a guy, someone sent me a TikTok and this guy was like, I'm a double agent. He was explaining his experience as being like looking very white and being black. And he was like, I'm a double agent. Like I see this, secret side of all of these people like I would explain that as my experience of like I fly under the radar and people expose themselves like so blatantly mm -hmm. to me wow. it's like oh my god oh my god like thank you for telling me that actually mm -hmm. I'm really glad you said that and now I'm gonna go weld over here right right absolutely 25 feet away from you you are no longer <laughs> invited on Thanksgiving no oh my god no you're no longer invited to even look at me at lunch be in my space like, go, <laughs> yeah. I go somewhere and like I will be telling my friends <laughs> yeah, okay I'm spreading the word yeah. I, uh, I, I commend you because it takes a, a woman of strength to be yeah. able to be in a space that is male dominant um yeah. white male dominant and conservative yes. And yeah. hold strong, um, hold strong to your beliefs and your values yes. and let them know that I do belong like this. There's no accident. There's no Absolutely. coincidence. Um, Absolutely. You know, I'm not in here because they needed to, to fill a quota. I'm in here because I have the skills and not only a do lot. you belong, but you're leading the industry. There we go. That too. Yes. <laughs> With that. So what's the, the, the biggest or like the most unusual project? Ooh, you've ever created or worked on so I just posted a picture of it I for my fabrication quarter of my school um again like being the only woman around a lot of the time like the shop gets messy people are a mess men don't care and I'd be like this Am I your mom? Like, am I being mom? To I'm not your mom. So, um, but sometimes like to make my life more at ease, it was just easier to be like, okay, well then I will be your mom. Cause what that means is I'm your boss. So okay. <laughs> let's right. go. Um, so I built this storage rack for this like giant amount of, uh, metal that had been donated from companies to this, like so much metal, mm -hmm. um, and it had just been like laying on the floor inside the shop, taking up 
probably a hundred square feet of space where it's like we could be making stuff here why are you like put this outside like it's not right. you need to be inside so um I built this giant right like a storage rack it's that's like wow. 20 feet tall and oh, you know wow. 40 feet wide it's like big it's like really big um a crane had to move it two oh, forklifts wow. yeah once it was fully built like two forklifts had to drive in unison like our teachers had to drive them together, together at the same time right and like pick this thing I was like I can't even watch like that's so right? scary um yeah what if it breaks I can't say oh. it's not my fault <laughs> well that is um, awesome how that's impressive that is bomb so it I've seen in some of the videos you've made or pictures I've seen, some of those sparks can get pretty big. Mm. Like, have you ever big. had any close calls or? Um, can I grab something? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. What does the gear okay. look like? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> right. So like, I will tell people all the time, um, fire is inevitable. Like you're going, you're going to catch on fire. Okay. So the, <laughs> the rule happen. Okay. Of thumb is that you wear clothes that are going to burn, not melt. Because if they melt, they melt into your skin. But if they burn, they just like just burn on top charcoal. of the surface, and you can just like put it out. And so, okay. I wear cotton clothes, but that means that they burn up. And so, oh. most of my <laughs> Most of my clothes Girl. end up. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So oh. like, they're totally burnt through, and like it goes all the way up to the. This is the shoulder. Wow. And that's just. So, I've burnt up pant legs. Um, I've been welding, welding, and I thought to myself, like, oh, it's a little hot. <laughs> oh, been a little hot, hot in here. here. I've, like, I've like looked down, and like my whole chest has been on fire. I'm like, oh wow! Hey, okay, my hair is about to burn up. Like, thankfully, my hair is never caught on fire. Mm, before mm -hmm. I say that, I have to like stop and think for a second. My baby hairs. There's something called like people call women who weld will joke is like a welder's halo. We'll have this like halo of burn oh. baby hairs, right? Because they're just like the things on top are burning and so I, I will always have hairs on top that are like only two or three inches girl <laughs> even oh, if you Lord. braid your hair like I braid my hair I put it away but still those top ones like they get a little burnt they get a little what is that hair maintenance like I'm interested bad <laughs> bad <laughs> it's bad um yeah we can't even talk about it oh no sensitive subject no there's nothing you can do yeah right. it's part of it yeah so have you ever like burnt flesh like emergency room status or no not emergency okay. room status I have some funny I have some I don't think you'll even be able to see I have some funny scars where I here's one um oh. other people have burnt me oh okay like not paying attention to what like swing yeah, that man right there. and it's like mm. oh my god but they say that like you need to just be aware of yourself mm. so that if other honestly it's like kind of it's not their fault when someone you know like you just stay away from people we all know we're dealing with hot mm. stuff so like if you're up in someone's business and you get burnt that's your your fault, fault. <laughs> yeah oh. so I have some of those no if no. I get burnt that's your fault <laughs> Definitely, like my fingertips, fingertips are definitely crispy. Uh, just like uh, the surface is sort of like harder than it used you to be. Have feeling? Yeah, I have feeling, but I almost feel like they're like heat treated. Like, wow. so how like, how heavy are the tools? Well, what tools? Depends on what you're using, well, I guess. You, you know, just your average, you know, Allen wrench. I don't know. I don't know tools. <laughs> Let's see. I'll grab one. Let's see. Let's see. This is. These are called whelpers. These whelpers. are, yeah, whelpers. They okay. do a. They do a bunch of different stuff. Um, like this is designed to grab oh. uh, a fitting on uh, the like 
gun a part of a welder. Yeah, and you can like use it as a wrench and like these are cutters. This is another you can like grab a different fitting on your welder to like wow. loosen or tighten. And then like your tips. So like these are light. These just go in your pocket and then they they spring open. So okay. that's like easier on your hand. It's oh, like way easier. Yeah. But your like it's more like the metal that you're working with. Like if you're that's carrying funny. around yeah. like sometimes I'm picking heavy things up with these like carrying you know the thing I'm picking up is 10 pounds so what is Jenna's ultimate goal with welding oh my gosh let me think about it for a second so like my ultimate goal for myself or for other people for, for I think you I, I start with I you two. first okay my ultimate goal for myself I've been telling people this forever my ultimate goal for myself is like welding from my garage making a significant amount of money like Mm. doing the projects that I find enjoyable and then people are buying them from me and putting them in their front yards okay (laughs) like just like truly be like truly being an artist I really don't want to like make commissioned pieces I would like to end at a place where like I'm making what I want and people are buying that from me absolutely (laughs) instead of like yeah I think as soon as something is commissioned like part of the joy is like stripped from me where I'm like oh, now I have to do it your way <laughs> <laughs> no I understand that uh, yeah understand it. Mm-hmm. so being your own own creative your own freedom flexibility entrepreneurship as well yeah it just uh, be yeah and like being financially in a position where like I'm truly comfortable and haven't passed the peak into like b- back to sadness I just want to like you know, sit at a comfortable level where I'm like safe and happy and can help who needs to be helped. And what can that look like? What, what can a welder make? Oh, well, they can make a lot of money. So, uh, in, I want to say that through a union, like private party, a welder can make so much money. Like you can make hundreds of dollars an hour if you're Mm. self-employed and you're charging what you want for you know people I'd say the average welder probably makes 40 to 50 dollars an hour after five or ten years in the industry um if you sign up through a union right now in Washington state they'll sign you on at 22 45 um and that's with full benefits Mm -hmm. and after after five years I think people are maxing out at um I want to say 67 mm-hmm. an hour full, which is a lot full benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And so people are, welders are comfortably making six figures. Um, I would say if you want to start welding, there's lots of different ways you could do it. Most people finish um, a college program in under two years. However, there is a need um, mm-hmm. to create the yeah. pathway not only just for kids in general, specifically for girls, um, yes. to, to introduce them to, you know, different industries that they Definitely. can put their hands into. Mm-hmm. Um, and because there are a lot of creative girls who don't necessarily get to tap into that side of creativity, yes. uh, who are sometimes pushed to the medical field, pushed to teaching. Yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. it's opening up and shifting that paradigm to let them know like, hey, there are other industries um, and we can use our hands. It's okay. Yeah. And it, and it's okay. A little bit. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I really think like encouraging girls to, use, I don't know, my parents put power tools in my hand when I was pretty little. And like, that's a very empowering thing. My screwdriver, like I felt like I could fix anything by the time I was like 12. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, let's, let's get into our, uh, our footprint, our shoe footprint. Let's unlace her. So our goal with Unlace Project is to unlace the stories that make people who they are, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and why they do what they do today. Um, and once we've unlaced that, that story and that person, we like then to reconnect it to a shoe that could re- represent who you are. Yes. So you okay. Are, oh, this person is this shoe because of just what you do and who you are. Oh my God. Okay. So, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so you make us think of, there's a lady called, um, a Laylee May, who is, she is the first woman to design a unisex pair of Jordans for a Jordan brand. Ooh. Um, okay. She's a creative, okay. 
you know, she's a leader in the industry. Um, and then she was the first woman to have a Jordan line and apparel. So foot, footwear mm. and apparel together. So she's okay. this, this black woman who is leading the industry. Um, she's the first of many things. Um, she's a creative. Um, so we're like, this fits Jenna. This is her. Yes. Aspect. You are the Jordan one by a Lely May that looks like this. All right. Oh my God. Let's see. I'm going to have to go fork out some cash. <laughs> 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 yes. You know what else? What? I don't know if this is an accident, but you guys, this is Seattle color. Oh, well, it's what? Seattle <laughs> colors. And you the A right there, the A Look right in the middle of the shoe. Oh, for Anderson. For Anderson. There you go. It's my <laughs> shoe. You would be proud to know that, like, I always laugh. I'll be like, well, I don't know anything about shoes, but welders do wear very expensive boots. Like, we are over <laughs> here, true, and, you know, yeah. we are over here in $400 boots, but they're just uh -huh. like, nope, but no one knows. They just like look regular. <laughs> yeah, and I have my helmet. Yeah, oh, got the helmet. helmet on. Get ready. Wow. I uh it's no, you do sort of you feel like you you put on your like leather sleeves and your steel toe boots and your helmet and you pull it down and you sort of feel like you're like okay oh, you're you like off to the character yeah. 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 you feel like i don't know like you're off to do something badass uh -huh. like, i love nothing, it but it's cool everyone feels that's that woman know. empowerment in there like let's it is me. it is but i see when it happens to the men and you're like oh my god tone it down I'm right like, like, <laughs> tone you know, it down steel toes. <laughs> You're wearing an apron. <laughs> <laughs>